Hi there again, and thank you so much for being a part of this mindful moment. We're talking about some of the core components of mindfulness. Here and there, I've been giving you a heads up on what we can learn from mindfulness, and I will be interspersing these with meditations and relaxations. But it's also very informative to learn some of these components of mindfulness and to bring them into our lives. It's going to help us not only here in the coronavirus COVID-19 lockdown, but it will help as you emerge from this lockdown into the new world. The new world is not going to be anything like the old world. It'll be something different and we don't know yet what that's going to be like. One of the subjects that I will talk about quite frequently because it is the one that has a lot of investment for people and that is identification. We often identify with the phrase I am. So we'll say, oh, I'm tired, I'm sick, I have a headache, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. So you see what we're doing in that case, we are making ourselves that quality, I am angry. And what's interesting is anger in itself is a secondary emotion. It's not a primary emotion. There's often sadness or frustration underneath anger. So by saying outright, I am angry, we're not really getting into the, the true reason as to why we're angry. But I want to just draw attention to this identification. By saying I am something, you are discounting all the other things that you actually are. So we can't ever fully be one singular thing. Think about it in your life. You are in a family and you have connections in that family. You are in the world, either as, um, you know, in terms of your workplace, what role do you have? Are you in support? Are you in management? Are you in administration? Are you in sales? You know, what type of role do you have at work? Or perhaps with this coronavirus, COVID-19, your particular industry has taken such a knock that you've actually been retrenched. Have you got no work? So in this case, you can't really identify with yourself in terms of the work that you previously did. And a lot of people are going through that actually. A lot of people are struggling with that. It's causing frustration and pain and disappointment and uncertainty and then building up anxiety again. So we can't just say, I am this, you know, I'm a sister, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, because that's not all that I am. So we're not only angry or sad. Can you get the feeling of I'm experiencing anger. I notice feelings of sadness. And when you can put that gap between how you describe a situation and how you experience it, it means it gives you the opportunity in the future, which is this next moment is your future, it means you have a step closer with some clarity to calm down a little. So yes, of course we feel frustrated. Of course we feel angry. And a lot of people make the mistake of trying to dumb down, dull down emotions or to make some emotions acceptable and some emotions unacceptable. Anger, for example, is often regarded as an unacceptable emotion. Yet it's, it's so natural. We, you, you only need to see a two-year-old throwing a temper tantrum to recognize how natural anger can be. And what is that anger? It's often frustration. Maybe another two-year-old took their toy. What I'm suggesting here is when we aren't so closely identified with the emotion, we can find a way to get through the emotion so that we're not only stuck in that space. And when we constantly identify with only one thing, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you don't really have the opportunity to get out of that space. Sick people feel sicker, tired people feel 
more tired. Happy people, yay, let's have more happiness, I'm a fan. But of course, it's the full spectrum of emotions, isn't it? And this is where, uh, for my mind, and this is, remember, this is just my personal opinion, this is not endorsed by anything, but for my mind, I think that's one of the shortcomings of antidepressants. Because you can't pull out one emotion from the spectrum. It's like saying, I have a rainbow and I'm going to pull out indigo. I don't want to feel indigo. It's not like that. You, you either get the rainbow or you don't. And the same happens with emotions. So if you are dulling down with medication, you're dulling everything down. So you're not feeling the happiness, you're not feeling the joy, you're not feeling the surprise, the enchantment, the, the nuance, the sorrow is possibly mitigated against, the anger probably maybe a bit more controlled, but so is the happiness. So you're kind of flatlining, but it's not really sustainable. So it's a case of going, all right, if it's the full rainbow of emotions, you know, they are so closely lined up next to each other, all those colors, aren't they? The red, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, the indigo, they're all together. Which means that you can use that same concept to move from a difficult emotion up to a slightly higher emotion, up to a slightly higher emotion. And from there, you can go from full on grieving, gradually moving up the scale of emotions to love. But you can't get there in one movement. You have to go in a meandering way moving through the scale of emotions. And so all the emotions matter, everything is connected, and wouldn't you rather be the whole rainbow instead of just trying to be red? First of all, you can't only be red, so you would effectively be just a dull grey. And that's not sustainable. I often think about all the, um, you know, the contraindications that certain medications have on the body and the other situations that they introduce. And it's why I like meditation over medication. I'm not suggesting you stop your medication at all. I'm just saying, isn't it interesting that these are thoughts we can have? So mindfulness opens up our awareness, opens up our thinking process. And now when we come back to that original statement that I made about not so strongly identifying with feelings, then you can notice in this moment right now, I feel angry. But I wasn't angry moments ago, and I'm not gonna always stay angry, and I am not anger per se. I'm not the personification of anger. I'm all these things. So I have variety and I I can I can be I can be fabulously complicated and that's who we are as people. It's complicated. It's not as simple as I am anger or I am sorrow. We have all those emotions, but identify less with one or the other at any given time and get used to, uh, just catch yourself. That's what mindfulness does. It just says, hey, let me catch myself. If you hear yourself saying, oh, I'm so tired or I'm so angry or I'm so worried, just go, oh, Tove mentioned that. I'm going to try and remember that. I notice I'm having feelings of worry. Try it on and be kind to yourself and those around you.